Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about something really, really simple. And I've given it away in the title, so this shouldn't take up too much of your time today. I'm hoping it'll be a quick one. And I'm going to use my lovely whiteboard and jot some things down because it's always good to jot things down. And do you know what? One of the things I like about these videos, and I'm definitely going to try and make this one short, but even though it's going to be short, I like to take a bit of time to sit and write something and, you know, because I could pre-write this and save time. But I actually think it's quite nice that we get we all get some time to slow down. You see, I'm building a little bit of meditation into our day this way, you know, like slowing down. We're going to have some writing in real time. There's something in this. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like this whole thing of writing uh, and slowing down the pace of everything. Okay, meditate, medicate. Take a look at these two words. What's the difference? There's just one tiny difference, isn't it? The T and the C. Otherwise, they are the exact same word. Now, unfortunately, today I've been too busy to look up or Google search the Greek derivative or the Latin origins or whatever it is that's going on here. But these are virtually the same word. And this occurred to me last week during one of my meditations. I've been meditating 15 minutes per day, every day. Uh, I think last week, I think I did miss the Sunday but I have been doing it every day. So um, hopefully I get into a true everyday situation. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm building up but 15 minutes a day. And in, during one of my meditations last week, it occurred to me, this, this phenomenon occurred to me. And it also occurred to me, now this was clearly not a very effective meditation because my creative mind was working. <laughs> so I think that happened probably during the early bit of the meditation and then I did sink into it, um, you know, and on that. And, and sometimes I think it's quite good for a person to share what their process is because then we can all see that, you know, it's up and down for people. So sometimes I will have a very pure 15 minutes where for virtually the whole thing I am just out and then my eyes just naturally open a few seconds before the timer runs out. Uh, I've had a lot of those meditations. Lately it's been a bit up and down. Um, my mind has been quite restless and busy and it's been a bit harder. But I think it was last week that I had this, this, this concept, a creative idea was coming in. <laughs> But then I think I did sink into probably two or three minutes of pure meditation and then kind of came out of it um, in the minutes towards the end. But this concept came in that, all right, what, what is meditation? And it really occurred to me that it is medication. But what are we doing? We are medicating quite specifically this. What are we medicating? We are medicating... Whoops. Oh, hang on. That's terrible. <laughs> Real time drawing. I will get better at this, guys. What are we med medicating? We are medicating our Rahu Ketu axis. The body, Ketu, without the head, Rahu. These are nodes of the moon, right? South node of the moon, north node of the moon. What is the moon? The moon is the mind. And when we're meditating, we are, and this is the thing that occurred to me, it was just last week and I'm still contemplating it, I'm still thinking about this, but we are medicating this Rahu Ketu axis. We are actually bringing it together, we're, we're medicating our whole life through meditation. 
right? Because you think about it, part of the goal of life is that we've come to explore the Rahu house. That's the future. That's where we need to go. That's where we are inexperienced and we need to build experience there. We're here to do some work there. We have to go there this time. We might be frightened. We might live in our Ketu house. We might not venture. And that does happen to people. Equally, Rahu Ketu access is extreme. Some people will go way extreme into the Rahu house and they will make all kinds of trouble, problems, they'll have obsessions, addictions, they can just, they can absolutely wreck your life if you go too much into the Rahu house. Rahu house can be dangerous, it can be tricky, it can be hard, it can be full of illusions, it can be, one of the things I was thinking about today is that it's the place of our obsession because you see the mind and our thoughts, right? We're thinking up here all the time, aren't we? And if you look at where your Rahu is, you'll see that a lot of your thoughts are about that part of your life. So if you've got Rahu in the seventh house, you might be obsessive about your partner, the person that you're married to. If you've got Rahu in the fifth house or in Leo, perhaps you are obsessive about your creative projects. Maybe you've got Rahu in the ninth house where you'll be obsessive about uh, your academic studies or you'll think about that all the time. I know someone actually, she did a PhD and yeah, she has Rahu in the third, um, ninth, sorry. And uh, I see a lot of PhD types running that um, ninth house, third house axis. So it's the place of your obsession. And one of the things I recognized during meditation recently is that when you're really meditating, when you're really doing it well, your attention goes from here to being more about the whole body you start to you start to become calm there's less attention up in the mind you're less up here and you're more just kind of throughout your whole body you're kind of connecting your mind and, and your body and you're just becoming one and when you're really meditating really really well one of the things I notice is that I'm observing the body breathing naturally and, and one time I thought you know is am I being breathed which is a fantastic thing to ponder or be suspended in, in that thought um, you know am I being breathed and it's kind of it's quite wonderful sometimes uh, also when you're very very still and you're really in that meditative place you feel your heartbeat you know and I always tend to think that the place where Ketu is it's the body without the head. All right, so what have you got with the body without the head? You've got the heart, right? And the heart, if you've ever watched Greg Braden, he talks about the fact that, you know, we have an eye that we can see from there. I think that's a Tibetan, um, I think a Tibetan Buddhist concept, you know, the, the one seeing eye of the heart. So... What I'm really saying through this video is that through meditation we can really, really, really connect our whole life. We can heal our whole life. If you're being really obsessive and manic up here, obsession or manic, or, or you know you've tipped too much onto the Rahu side of things or perhaps you're really stuck in here so Ketu you're stuck uh, Groundhog Day you know um, what else have we got here stuck stagnant stale boring controlled everything's the same no movement, nothing coming in, nothing going out. This can get very, very boring if you just live in your Ketu house, right? And it can be 
it can, it can feel like death. It's just, it's so dull that you just, oh. So if you're in an extreme place, to medicate that, all you have to do is meditate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link below uh, a terrific piece of guidance. This, this is a great link, which, have I got it on my screen? Yes, it says Transcendental Meditation Technique. Don't pay a thousand plus dollars. And it's absolutely true. This uh, particular video, and believe me, I've paid all kinds of sums of money and done lots of TM courses and other kind of courses, Kriya Yoga, this, that, I've done all these. And uh, everything that's in this 1 minute 50 link that I'm going to send you to is, uh, is everything that I've been taught. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you find it useful and I hope it helps you to medicate your whole life. Imagine that. And, and medicating that Rahu Ketu axis, you know, the seesaw of life. If you feel that you're too extreme, then in order to bring back balance and bring back a, a nice even keel there, you just have to meditate. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.